live from Los Angeles, it's theCUBE, covering E3 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Los Angeles Convention Center with 68,000 of our closest friends. It's E3, it's the biggest industry event in gaming and we're pretty psyched to be here. It's our first time, but our next guest has been coming, I think he said for like 19 years, so we're really excited to invite Chase to the set. PR director from Twitch. Chase, great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. And and, and you've oversold my, my time here. It's actually only been 18 years. 18 years, that's because you missed one, I think, yeah. right? I took, right. A, I took a break, it was one, during one of the slower years, and then I came back into the fold. So I just love to get your perspective with, with kind of looking back at how the industry has changed, how the event has changed, and how gaming ecosystem has changed, and the way people interact with these things. Yeah, it's interesting. E3 has definitely gone through like almost a roller coaster in terms of what it's like on the show floor. My first year in 99 was where I was working with uh, at the PR team for the Sega Dreamcast launch. And we had a full stage show that every hour, every other hour we have Ooh La La from Space Channel 5. She would come out on stage and with a full dance troupe and it would be like a vacuum. All of the attendees in E3 would all be sucked into our booth and then it would dissipate after that. But every two hours it was like the, the wave comes, tidal waves and crashing back in. Every other hour we had inline skaters and graffiti artists for Jack Ryan Radio. We had a second floor where uh, local bar broadcast crews could come and film the whole E3 because there's so much happening. Right. And so, and everywhere you went, it was a bombast of noise. And then in the years that followed, they kept, uh, booths started getting more smaller, not because of the scope of the show, but because they, they were trying to make it more industry friendly, less of a carnival ride and less of a competition, like a brands trying to outdo each other, but more of let's make this more about the games than the booth babes and those things. So right, they started, right. uh, but then slowly it started building back up and it's gone through peaks and valleys. Um, so it's definitely been interesting to watch. Right. Um, and you were, we were talking earlier about, you know, what are some of the biggest changes I've seen and uh, from the Twitch perspective, it's seeing the validation of content creators grow. Um, you know, live streaming is a fairly new aspect to the convention space, to the convention era. Um, I mean, obviously, we've been doing it for you know about a, you know half decade or right, so. Right. But um, in terms of the validity of the creators themselves, like in the past, you know, they weren't treated as media. You wouldn't see them on pre-registration -pre list. Now they're getting, you know, we have hundreds here at E3. Right, right. You know, where every year it's just, it, it doubles the amount of content creators. And it's not just because of E3 or, you know, saying, oh, they're, 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 they're as relevant as traditional media, if not more so, but all the brands are leveraging them, you know. So what you'll find is, a lot of live stream setups from booths. Every, right, right. People are streaming their contents. When they're doing their press conferences, they bring a lot of content creators in, you know, put them in the front row because, right. you know, one thing I love about the content creator era is that there's people like me who, I'm a hardcore gamer, but I've been doing this for so long that even if I see a game I love, I don't jump out of my seat going, oh my gosh, they've done it. But when you have all these new gamers who might have been game for a while, getting that treatment that I did traditionally, there's so much more, they're so vibrant about it, and there's so much more excitement, and that's why, you know, um, I, E3 is so important, but it's definitely so for the content creators who traditional media might feel threatened by, And uh, but I love seeing the energy they bring to the space. It's such an interesting twist on the content creators, because the developers have always been, you know, in high demand, they've always been rock stars, you want to yeah. get people developing on your platform, but the content creators is a very different kind of flavor of that, where now people are sharing their experience and they're becoming like little mini rock stars in the way, their own voice, and the way that they interact with these games, which is really an adjunct to the actual gameplay itself. So it has been a pretty interesting growth, and you guys pioneered it early on. Yeah. But one of the other things I think that's pretty interesting in the, in the content creator space is the monetization, right? Can these people make a living, and we know that that you can't really do it on advertising, there's really not that much advertising, but you guys have pioneered a ton of kind of direct monetization op options and opportunities to help these people actually make money while they're creating this great content. Yeah, so content creators on Twitch, you know, people stream for a number of reasons. Some do it for the attention, um, some do it for uh, the money, and some do it for fame. Um, well, they do it for the love, like the attention, the right. to get famous, or they do it for the money. And so, you know, in terms of monetization, you know, we want to help support those who are trying to do it for a career. Um, and so, at Twitch, we have like the, 
the broadest means of ways to monetize, but also the lowest barrier to, of entry to take advantage of them. And so what I mean by that is that we have what's called our partnership program, our partner program, and that's where all the best streamers uh, uh, want to be. Right, Because that right. has the most monetization options. But we also recently introduced what we call our affiliate program, which is a stepping stone to partnership. And while it doesn't have all the whistles and bells of being a partner, it does have ways to monetize so they can start making a living as well. Right. And when I talk about having the most means to monetize, um, we have a whole laundry list of ways. We have revenue share from advertising. We have the ability to offer subscriptions to your viewers. And while every channel is free to watch, with subscriptions you can offer special perks to your viewers. Right. You might want to you give them special emotes. You can make it so the chat is only for subscribers. So there's a lot of ways that you can, uh, a lot of perks you can give your right, subscribers. Right. And our subscribers, by the way, they know that they're supporting you and they're all frequently um, Ex proud to do so. You know, right. they enjoy supporting their content creators because they know if they didn't support you, you might not be streaming yeah. and they love being playing a role in keeping their favorite creators um, around. Um, we have a, prob a program called uh, Cheering with Bits. And it's a little complicated to always explain, but it's where we have bits, which is a virtual good. And with these goods, you, um, you put them into chat. You purchase these bits, you put them in the chat and they become these animated emotes. And the more you put in, the bigger the emotes get and the more animated they get so the creator can see who their biggest fans are. Um, and that's another way they can monetize. We have a really successful program uh, in partnership with Amazon called Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime is a benefit of Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, all you have to do is connect it to your Twitch account and you can start taking advantage of all these great perks. The one I that- I haven't done that yet. Yeah, and the one that benefits uh, our Twitch Prime members, Amazon Prime members, both of them the most, is that you get a free 30-day subscription to any content creator of your choice. Um, and so, uh, the way that helps, is the same as if somebody were to go and hit the sub button on that channel directly. Right. And so we've seen huge amount of revenue being generated by our creators just from people using their free 30-day subscription. Oh, that's great. It's just so interesting to me um, that before to pay content creators in the old media model, right? They create their content, they sell advertising, you buy some Tide, Tide gives some money to the to ABC, they give it to the content creator. But this has really opened this whole democratization of this kind of this direct support, if you will, of the type of content that you're interested in with, without really going through the middleman with all these micropayments and yeah. as you said, all these kind of fun and different options yeah. to compensate for them to enable just this massive explosion of these creator types. Right, but it's actually, but there's still, you also have the advertisers and you now. you still have the advertisers. Right, well, but what they're doing is that, you know, they're sponsoring, create, they're, they're, our, create, our creators are getting a lot of sponsorship opportunities, they're getting, they're being part of influencer programs. Uh, that's um, right. We actually have a full advertising sales team who works with uh, brands to do what we call custom solutions, um, which is where they will, instead of just run an ad on a channel, they will, um, do like an activation, for example, we work with Totino's for uh, to, for their pizza rolls where they create, we created a bucking couch. Um, so we had a couch like a bucket, uh, like a buffalo that, right, right. and so we had a, uh, there was a content creator playing a video game on it, um, and the people in chat can, can control it by saying up, down, up, down, or right, left, and they would move the Try couch. throw them off the, and, off the and couch. And so because it was very, um, it was very in line with what our community enjoys, they like the, the create the personality involved in it. Right. They like being able to play a part in it, you know. And so those types of custom activations are something that really resonate with our community, and by default, they resonate with brands. And the things you can actually only do on Twitch. We sort of pioneered this new field of of, of advertising. Interesting. So as we look down the road, and let you go back. I know you're yeah. super busy, and I really appreciate you taking a few minutes. You look at the future, right? We see these tremendous booths that are here. Fabulous graphics, VR coming down the pike, right? We're getting a ton more uh, CPU and graphical chips are all over the place. So basically power and internet and 5G is coming, mobility is going to be way, way faster. Where do you see it going? What, what are some of the things that in your vision as you sat around you would love to be able to do but just haven't been able to? Where do you see some of these kind of new visions being enabled by some of this new leading edge technology? Well, I can speak in terms of where we see Twitch going, which is uh, we recently introduced a product called Extensions. And what Extensions are, um, it's a developer, they're created by outside developers, and what they are is they add interactive functionality 
to uh, broadcasters' channel pages, whether it's a widget underneath the, the screen or it's an overlay that goes on top of it. And with these overlays, you can, it's creating a more interactive experience for the viewers, and that's where we see the future of gaming going, which is that it's not a, it's not a sit back experience, it's a lean forward. For example, if you're playing Hearthstone, there's a Hearthstone extension where you could literally click on the screen and see what cards the person's holding. And we, you know, we worked with G League, which is the, 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 the at live NBA uh, minor league right, system. Right. Where no longer the D League, now the G League. Yeah, and so <laughs> you could actually click on the player, or you know, look at the find stats on the players who are on the on the court. You could find stats on the league. Um, we're also with extension. You can do leaderboards. You can do polls. You can do mini games. There's, it's actually unlimited the amount of creative ideas. Um, there's you can do a. You can have viewers uh, vote on what uh, on an, during award show on what games they think are going to win. We did this with the Game Awards last year, where viewers would vote on what games they thought were going to win, and then the Game Awards put a leaderboard to show which communities got it closest. Right, right. Um, so there's so much with it, and that's where we're putting a lot of attention on. So extensions is definitely going to be one of the futures of for spectators. Right, and just overlaying all these different things yeah. over that baseline content, yeah. over that baseline creator. Yeah. All right, Chase. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes, no and uh, I was going to bring you a 20th anniversary T-shirt next year, but you got two more to go. There you go. <laughs> I'll have to wait. All yeah. right. Cool. He's Chase. I'm Jeff. We are Thank at the you. Los Angeles Convention Center at E3. Thanks for watching. Sure.